God, I'm a dog, and I gotta clean up the shit. My wife's got shit radar, too. There is shit in the yard! There's shit in the yard! It's three feet of snow covering the shit. But it's out there! How do you live with yourself knowing there's shit in the yard? There's shit all over the yard! You know how I live with myself? Because I grew up in the 70s. Anybody old enough to remember the 1970s? 70s? 60s, 50, 40, how far back you want to go with this fucking guy? <laughs> Nobody cleaned up dog shit in the 70s, right? If you saw dog shit next to the curb, what'd you do? Look out for the shit. Oh, thanks. You just walked over the shit. That was it. You left it there. We left it there so long, it turned white. Remember white shit? You don't see white shit anymore. It got white and hard. Then when they, they just turned to powder, it looked like little piles of cocaine next to the sidewalk. But nobody cleaned it. Now people can't wait to clean up their dog shit. I got a neighbor with a little dog. He's like a ninja. The guy puts a blue bag right on his hand. He's like, Fluffy, shit in my hand, Fluffy. Don't even let it hit the ground. The dog is this big. Sometimes he just picks the dog up and squeezes the dog into his hand like a Carvel cone. And then he pulls the shit through the bag. He ties the bag in a knot and he walks down the street twirling the shit. This motherfucker, I hate my neighbor. I hate that son of a bitch. I hate him. You know why else I like the winter? No marathons. I hate you marathon running sons of bitches with your numbers and your shorts. Look at me, 5K, 10K, F-U-C-K, how about that? But you're fucking running. Because they're going to do it in a row. We're trying to drive. The Long Island Marathon comes right down my street. Now, when my kids were younger, we hand them water, hand them Gatorade. Hey, now my kids don't give a shit. I can't pull out of my driveway because these assholes are going to finish. I'm finishing. Yeah, on the bumper of my fucking car, you're going to finish. You know, the New York Marathon, they shut down the Varizano Bridge. Listen to me. They shut down the Varizano Bridge. Who the hell are you to shut down the Varizano Bridge? Next year, if she's got 50,000 treadmills, put them in a big room somewhere. Set them all for 26 miles. Whoever beeps first, you're the winner. Take the treadmills, put them on eBay, get the money, give it to whatever cause you're running for. But stay the hell off the goddamn road when you run your friggin' race. You want to hear a true story? My brother and I are watching one of these New York marathons about seven, eight years ago. This lady's running. She's doing pretty well. Does anybody know what happened? She's running and she, she shit herself. I swear to God. She shit, her, she shit herself. I looked at my brother and I go, did she just shit herself? My brother's like, I think she shit herself. At the same time, the announcer goes, it's a shame she soiled herself, Jim, but it looks like she's going to have the best time she ever had. Looks like she's going to win the race for the women. Of course she's going to win the race. Who wants to run behind her now and step in her shit? And she kept on going. She didn't even stop. At what point in your life does that race become more important than shitting yourself in public? Isn't that the goal, not to shit ourselves in public? Isn't that what we've all done successfully today? Most of us? Because I don't know about you, if I felt that coming on, I'd be like, uh-oh, you know what? I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Go ahead, you take it, you win. Maybe I shouldn't have carved up last night. She was allowed to keep on going. No other sport are you allowed to shit yourself and keep on going. See, you don't see a baseball player hit a home run, they're round in second, and shit themselves. That's a ground rule double. You shit yourself coming around second. That's a ground rule double. Holy shit, look how fat I am. Oh, how you doing, Steve? You doing all right? Good to see you, man. My old neighborhood buddies are here. That's all that matters, right? You look back, you see your old neighborhood friends here from when we were this big. We used to run. Remember we, we used to do? Remember what things we did? There was no... We used to ink... We used to eat lead paint with fucking mayonnaise on it. Just <laughs> playing outside, throwing rocks at each other. Throwing rocks at each other. Could you imagine? People use that in war now. We would throw rocks and shit and light shit on fire in front of people's houses and... Shoot, remember the guy we shot in the head? That went, we, we didn't do that. that was... All right, everything okay over here? You need a little Metamucil or something? What the hell is going on at this table? Is everything okay? 
What are you drinking, seltzer? <laughs> Can we just get them four shots of tequila? And let's, get it, let's get them all whacked out of them. I'm kidding. You're wrong. It's all right. We all, we'll get this, we're all going to hand out stints at this show. So. <laughs> I got tits now. I'm a mess. How long are you guys married? Are you married? You guys are married? You're not married? Huh? Are you not married to her? Huh? Are you with her? Huh? 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 You're together, but you're not married. All right. Were you, were you ever married? No. Right. What's that? One time. That's done. Okay. Are you guys married? What the fuck kind of Jerry Springer shit do we got going on? Over here? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Talk about. Stepping on eggshells. <laughs> is your dick in your ass too, like mine is? <laughs> it's getting there. I'm married 30 years this year. 30 years. Marianne, my cousin's here. 30 years this year. We're at the point in our relationship where my wife always wants me to be happy now. Why aren't you happy? What are you mad? What are you an asshole? What are you mad at? Because we're not allowed to be mad, guys. I grew up in the 70s. My father got mad he would throw a shovel through the wall. Whatever we did to make that happen never happened again. I get mad. I'm on Prozac, Zoloft. I'm in anger management classes. I gotta go to therapy and relive the event 14 times. So as not to throw off the delicate harmony of my family. Even if it's a legitimate reason for getting mad. Like, we got a new carpet in the house. Now my wife is the carpet mafia. You walk in the house, you gotta take your shoes off, put another outfit on, like you got the fucking Zika virus. Yet, yeah, her precious dog could go in the backyard, take a shit, come back in the house, then he's got this move, he's able to drop his ass flat on the carpet, back legs up, with his front legs, he just drags his ass across the carpet, leaving a line of shit. Yet yeah, my sneakers are too dirty. Am I mad? No, I'm happy! Because I'm happy, happy! Because the rules have changed, ladies. My father never had a minivan. He had a 68 Chrysler vinyl seat. He made a turn. My brother and I were hanging out the window. He didn't give a shit. He was trying to lose us. Seat belts, we had those big metal buckles. It was like Roman gladiators in the back seat of my father's car. He was smoking, drinking. There was livestock in the trunk. He didn't give a shit. And my kids were strapped in so tight. Daddy, are we there yet? No. Can you scratch my nose then? Can't move back here, damn it. So when you get in the car, you gotta pop in a CD or a DVD for the kids. When I was a kid, hey dad, can I listen to something on the radio? Shut up when you get in your own car and listen to your own shit. <laughs> Shut the hell up back there. I didn't have shit. You ain't getting shit. I'll turn this car right around and we go home. What do you want to go home? Oh, I miss the ass kicking I'm getting from you while you're driving and smoking with the windows up? That's what he would do. My father would drive and smoke with the windows up. There was no air in that car. My brother and I looked like two dying goldfish at the top of the... <laughs> Trying to suck air to whatever little pinhole was rusted through the top of the piece of shit that he was driving that week. Not now. These kids got everything they want. DVD players that pop from the ceiling while they're listening to their iPhones and iPads and fast food and special sippy cups. Special fucking sippy cups. When my son was little, he was like, Father, make a left over here. I'd like to browse at Toys R Us for a half hour. <laughs> then I have a play date with Justin at three. Can you have me back by three? Justin likes me to be on time. Fuck Justin, you spoiled little shithead. That's what we're doing. We're raising a whole generation of spoiled little shitheads. You guys realize that? Stop buying your kids shit. Because when you buy shit for your kids, my kids hear about it and they want the shit that you just bought for your little bastards. Stop it. Just say no. We can't even tell him no. I told my son no once. You know what he had to do? He had to Google it. He know what the fuck no meant. <laughs> Siri, what does no mean, Siri? We don't tell him no because you don't want to hear him cry because crying sucks, doesn't it, guys? Doesn't crying suck? Hold on. Doesn't crying suck? <laughs> Talking to the men now, ladies. You use crying as a weapon. I don't know how you're able to turn it on and turn it off. Because my wife would be like, What I do with going to my sister's house on Sunday? I didn't know you had a whole football thing going on. Ah! All right, we'll go to your sister's. Just shut the hell up. She'd be
be like, really? I gotta figure out what I'm wearing now. <laughs> and kids don't cry like we cried. I mean, you kid, you're whacked for doing something wrong. You're like, Wah. shut up or I'll give you something to cry about. And you're like, <sighs> and that was it. You were able to stop crying. Think about that sick Nazi shit. You were so scared, you stopped crying. Have you heard the kids cry now? It's evolved. They cry like they're shifting gears. They're like, Wah! I can't handle that shit. My wife can handle it. Years ago, my wife took my son to the Costco and they bought 14 pounds of Oreos. And by the way, saved us money somehow. I don't know how. Coupon queen worked out how, but as far as Oreos are concerned, she got it over on them. She buys 14 pounds of Oreos, brings them home, puts them in a cabinet. The next day my son wakes up, he wants a cookie for breakfast. He's not gonna go to her, he knows she's gonna say no. So he comes to me now at six o'clock in the morning, he's a little guy at the time. He's not gonna approach me and go, Dad, I thought it over last night, I really like a cookie for breakfast. He's a little guy, he gets in my face and goes, I I want a cookie! <laughs> now, you're an intelligent man. Somebody looks at you and goes, I want a cookie. What do you do? What do you do? You give them the fucking cookie, that's right! You give them the... Just high-five me like a normal... There you go. <laughs> you give him the cookie! He could ask for crack. I said, come over here with the pipe, let's get high and watch Spongebob together. She went, my wife went nuts at me. You can't give him, give him a cookie for breakfast, you asshole. I can't give him one cookie, and an hour later, she gave him waffles, butter, syrup, whipped cream, some strawberry shit from a can and bacon, yet the one cookie that I gave him is gonna ruin the metabolism she created in this kid's life, the little time he's on the planet, and my brother-in-law is a fucking asshole. That's got nothing to do with my act. I just want you people to know that my brother-in-law is a fucking asshole. Here's how bad I mean it, too. My brother-in-law's a fucking asshole t-shirts. You want one? Anybody got a fucking asshole brother-in-law? Ten bucks after the fucking show. They were gonna be 20, but I knocked it in half. A, because we're in Bohemia. And B, because I want to spread the word. If you got a fucking asshole brother-in-law, let him know. Here comes my cake. Look how good that looks. Oh, look at that. Marianne, let me see that. Give me that. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at that fucking thing. Look at that. Look at that. You don't eat shit like that. That's how you got big arms like that, right? What's that, a brownie with whipped cream on it and everything? Oh, man, I'm gonna rub it all. Is that cheesecake? Oh, my God. Another piece of cheesecake? What is that one? Dude, what is that? Is that chocolate? What is that? Carrot cake. Oh, fuck you. I know, I can't. I'm on Weight Watchers. I'm on... Fuck! I'm addicted to Nutella, that's my problem. I'm on Weight Watchers eight months because of Nutella. Ask me how much I lost, ask me how much. I gained six, it's impossible. It sucks when you get fat and you're trying to lose this fucking weight, right? Yeah, I'm the only one fat in here. Go fuck yourselves all of You're looking at me like you don't even know what I'm talking about. We have no idea. We just came from a Zumba class. I was on Slim Fish. You ever have that stuff? Gas in the can, if you had it, you know. Put your ass in the water to be Swim Fish. <laughs> I bought the vibrating belt from the infomercial. Remember that thing? It dropped a little too low. I didn't leave the house for a week and a half. It was like, brrr, brrr. It was like 50 shades of gray in my house. <laughs> Meanwhile, my wife's in good shape. She does hot yoga. Have you heard of this now? Not only, not only did they have yoga, but they got hot yoga. So I'm always thinking of food, so I drop her off at the hot yoga place, and the windows of the place were all steamy, and it made me want dumplings. <laughs> right to the Chinese restaurant. 